Hey, beautiful listeners. This is Julie, and I am so beyond thrilled and excited. You, you're in for a really special treat today. I have a very dear friend and a woman that's going to blow your socks off. I am so honored to introduce you to Samantha Moltrop. Sam is a mom of two. She is an entrepreneur, and she is also a psychic intuitive. She is able to access higher consciousness to deliver messages, guidance, and empowering information. You can learn more about Samantha and dive deeper with her at thesoultherapist.com. Without further ado, we're just going to go right in because there is so much to talk about, Sam. I love you. I love what you're able to do and to, so excited to share you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yay. This is such a fun conversation. So... You know, it's amazing to me. I heard you um, on Katie Crenshaw's podcast, and right when I heard you, I just I thought, my gosh, we we've got to connect. And I, I I just resonated with you being a mom and an entrepreneur, and then of course talking about your gifts. I thought, my gosh, this is such a topic that I think uh, would be fascinating to explore. And so, you know, we talk about being the USU and I think you have a real amazing story about what your USU looks like and would just love to hear, like, talk to us about these gifts. Like when did you start noticing or knowing or feeling that you were able to access higher realms of consciousness? Okay. Well, it was, gosh, since I was young, like just a really little girl, I was always able to see spirits and, um, I didn't know that that's what they were. Um, I just, it, that was just my life. That was just how things were. And then as I became a teenager, I would just know things. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was really difficult for me because, um, the way I grew up and where I was, that really wasn't something that was encouraged, talked about, and I didn't really know who or where to go. So then as I got into my twenties, it, it just kept getting stronger. It was, it was almost like, um, like spirit was pushing on me, like trying to push me and say like, come on, come on, are you ready? And I still, you know, same thing. I still ignored it. And I would read some books. I started kind of dabbling into meditation and, you know, things like that. But um, to be completely honest with you, I started to get scared because I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't know how to read the energy. Yeah. I didn't know how to interpret what was coming through. So to me, I, I assumed everything was bad that everything was scary. And really it was just, it was just unknown. It was unfamiliar. Um, and so it wasn't until honestly, my father-in-law had, had passed and it, 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 it was like the universe cracked open for me. Wow. Um, and synchronicities were, were just, just lining up everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I remember I saw a psychic medium myself, um, who's actually pretty well known in my area. And I saw her and she told me that, you know, she said, you know, that you have the same gifts that I do. And I just remember thinking like, Oh, you just, you say that to everybody, don't you? You know, cause I, I didn't really believe cause when I sat across from her, I thought she was the most powerful being I had ever met in my life, yeah. you know, for her to know the things about me that she knew. So I thought for sure there's no way, but again, you know, I, I, the more I ignored the stronger spirit got. Um, so then I would have to say when I finally stopped ignoring it, when I finally said, okay, I will be your instrument, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead, use me in which way you will was honestly last summer. And, mm -hmm. um, it was, it came to me through visions. It came to me. I, I believe that I had an angel, um, working with me. Um, one of the archangels, Jeremiel and, it, and it was, it was something, it was really difficult for me because um, my, my husband's a computer programmer <laughs> and um, so he, is, he is very, very logical. And it was really difficult because I, 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 I wanted to have somebody to talk to about all these things that I was hearing and feeling and seeing and knowing. And 
when I would bounce it off of him, it would come back and um, I would start to feel self-conscious, but this angel, um, the presence just kept getting stronger, just kept getting stronger. And I said, okay, I, I am here. I will listen. Um, mm. I, I do, um, even though I don't, I don't follow a religious, um, religious order, but I do believe in the Holy Spirit. And I, I've always believed that the wind speaks to me. And so I had a couple what I call run-ins with the Holy Spirit where the wind would just come through, like just come through me and I would just know. And um, so basically between the Holy Spirit and uh, Jeremy, I just said, okay. And I just started to trust mm. and I would trust small things. Um, like one of them, um, um, because of my babies, I was cleaning with bleach like that was one of them. And he asked me to start using more natural cleaning supplies. And um, so I just started noticing that all these like little things that I was being asked to do, they just, they kept piling. Like it was like, they were like building blocks for my, for my new foundation. And then um, before I knew it, I started having visions and that was new for me because I had never had visions in the past before. And, um, I remember I went into a deep meditation and he asked me, do I want to see what, what I meant for? And, mm. and I'm not going to lie, to be honest with you, I was, I was kind of, I, I was playing very small. And so I'm like, sure, you know, whatever, you know? Um, and that was when I saw, that was when I saw my purpose and, and it was, it was time for me to, to really break out of hiding, break out of my comfort zone and make myself more well known because of my gifts and because of how strong my gifts are and where they, and where they're rooted yeah. um, in, in me and what I'm able to do for people and what I'm able to pull out of people and what I'm able to show them. I, simply just said, okay, let's do this. And so that's, that's how it started. And pretty much since then, it's had a life of its own. Um, and I just have learned to stop making plans where my business is concerned. So <laughs> because it's just that it's, it, it just, it feels like to me, the more I let go yeah. of this outcome or this perceived, like my desires that I want for my own business the more I let go of that and the more I just allow spirit to guide me, um, it, it's bringing me to, um, I don't know how to say this more, not so much higher realms, but it's, it's bringing me to higher vibrations. It's, it's just really opening many, many doors for me that I, I didn't even know existed, to be honest with you. Wow. Woo. That I, 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 like there's a lot there and I want to pull apart some of the things that you said and go back to some of them because it sounds like, you know, um, going back to when you were little and I remember you sharing this with me that if we can even go back to there for a little bit, because mm -hmm. I remember you talking about um, feeling like there were beings that were on your bed or wanting to feed them. Like, can you share a little bit about when you were little, kind of what that was like? I think um, for those I know, oftentimes there's things that happen when we're little and it's like, oh, that doesn't happen to everybody. Yes. Well, I, um, I, some of where, where it got, where it, this is something that my mom had told me, but I did like, I remember when she told me my invisible friends. Okay. Your invisible uh, friends. That's right. My invisible friends. Um, and they were people. They weren't, they weren't, you know, kangaroos or, um, you know, panda bears. They were actually people to me and I would make my mom feed them. And, you know, my mom would give them invisible food, but to me, they were so like, I, I was like, mom, like this, like you have to feed them. So my mom would seriously have to feed these friends of mine, like, and give them Kool-Aid and, you know, give them all of that. And, um, later on, I, I gosh, I can't remember when it was revealed to me, but my mom, my mom just told me that they were invisible. And, um, I didn't really know that. And I remember one time when I got really angry with these, you know, with these spirits that I didn't know were spirits was when they would, to me, it looked like they would kind of like touch my stuff. 
Um, like they would go through my drawers or, um, you know, play with my crayons and like while I'm trying to sleep and I didn't like that so much. And, um, I remember one time that actually did, did stand out to me the most was, um, I was five years old and my granddad died, my mom's dad. And, um, we were, it was at the funeral um, I think it was before the funeral, I think, because I think we were at my grandma's house. And I remember my granddad was with me. And because I mean, I was five, I didn't really understand death. Um, mm -hmm. I knew my granddad was sick, but I just it like it's you're, you're five. Like you right. just didn't sink and in. And to me, he's standing right here, you know, like next to me. And I remember I told wow. my mom and I told my grandma and I think I was upsetting because my my grandma um, what she's she's no longer with us, but um, she was a strict Catholic. Oh, so okay. talking about spirits and, you know, things like that did, did not fly. Um, but um, I remember I said to my mom, like, I, like, granddad doesn't know why everyone's sad because he's not in pain anymore. He's really happy. And wow. I remember having to stay with a neighbor um, during those. And it, it might not have been for that reason. It just might have been because I was five. But, um, wow. like, I do remember that. And then my granddad, even though I didn't know him very well, had a very strong presence um, through yeah. my childhood um, into my teenage years. Um, I just, I remember I would always, um, I would always ask him for guidance when my mom was concerned. Um, mm. so I had, a, I had an extremely tumultuous relationship with my mom right. and um, I would always ask him, you know, for guidance um, to help me. Like, you know, like how do I maneuver this? Like, what do I do? Um, and then, yes, yeah, so the like a little, so that's mostly what I remember as a little girl, but, um, can gosh, I, say, I just, yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. When with him, so I'm like trying to, the people that are listening, I'm thinking like for them and like, do you hear him? Do you get a sense of him? Do you smell? Like, I know there's different ways of, um, we can talk about that. Like the clairaudient, clairvoyant, clairsentient yes. for you. Was it like, Hey granddad, like I see you to my right. Like the image of you or is it more just a feeling or knowing like I'm curious I can hear people being like okay what do you mean by that like tell me more because that's super cool okay so this I'm going to kind of I'm going to make it a little bit more broad perfect than just my granddad because it's changed for me over the years so okay. with my granddad when I was younger um okay I don't know if I'm allowed to say this um but but this this also this kind of I, I this this also helps Gosh. Okay. So when I, when I was younger, um, I was, um, you might have to put a trigger warning, but, um, I was physically abused by both of my parents. Okay. Um, it was my dad first, oh. then my mom. But I do remember, um, when it was my mom, I would always pray to my granddad. Like mm -hmm. that was, I was always asking him to be there to protect me. Cause in my child mind, I'm like, this mm -hmm. is your daughter, you know, mm -hmm. like, can What's you fix on? this? Can you, can you make her, can you make her stop? Yeah. And it was, it was like, it was like when, when I had him and, it, and it's not like he could make him stop because there, there was something that, you know, both my mom and I had to learn from having that type of experience. Yeah. Um, and we can, we can get into that later too, but, um, I always remember I could feel his presence and it was almost like, mm. like as a girl, cause I, I think this was probably around when I was 10 and 11, um, and I just remember feeling protected. Right. Like, like yeah. I don't know, it was like, even though I was so scared and I didn't know what was happening, I could feel like somebody was, it, like it was a shield, even though like I could still feel the blows, but they were softened. I don't know how to describe it. And that, wow. that's how I could feel his presence. And to be completely honest with you, my granddad's presence did leave me. Mm. Um, his presence did leave me a few years after um, a few years after, um, the abuse had stopped. Wow. Um, and I think that, you know, and I, and, and for me, I always thought that maybe it's cause he lived out his purpose, right. you know, like he was with me for when I needed him. And I have to be honest with you, I am 38 now. So even if he did show up, um, yeah. he would have to be very loud for me to know that that was him. Right. Um, I do know when my grandmother died, um, she always wore that cover girl foundation. Oh yeah. And I remember so, that. Yep. Yes. And so, um, when 
when, after she had died, I could smell that, like just out of nowhere, like I could just smell it. And with mm. her, um, I remember there were several times, like I saw her walking through my apartment where I would wake up to her standing over her, my bed, but it was like, once I opened my eyes wide enough, she would go, um, she mm. would just go away. My father-in-law, um, he yeah. sits at the edge of my bed. Um, and he is mostly present in my, for me, like very, very present for me. And it's, and I don't see somebody, there's no silhouette, but I, it, I, it feels like there's somebody sitting on the edge of my bed. And that's generally where he talks to me. And he, he has a very strong presence when there's turmoil in um, his family. Um, and it's, it's, he's usually, I'm, I'm usually asked to be the bridge. Um, or, um, or even from my husband, um, if my husband needs some type of guidance, you know, he'll, he'll ask me to be there. He tells me certain things about my kids. Um, wow. and the funny thing is now that my son can talk, he saw a picture of my father-in-law and was asking us who this was because he wanted to know his name because he plays cars with him and plays hide and seek with him outside and is wondering when he can come over, you know? And wow. so it was just, yes. And so I was happy that like my husband heard that because again, I was like, proof, proof. Okay. Right. <laughs> you know, like I our told son you, has your this. dad, yes, I told you our, your dad is here. Um, wow. so I guess, but when I'm doing, when I'm doing readings, like yeah. when I'm, when I'm, when I'm doing a mediumship reading, I do have to say, and I always say this, not one session has ever been the same. There are similarities, but um, I have had, um, I have had spirits, um, spirits of loved ones show up and their spirit is so strong that it fills up my room, you know, that I'm, that I'm sitting in. Um, and they just feel like a very, very strong spirit. Um, sometimes they will, I always say the men sit to my right and the women sit to my left. And that's how I'm able to identify, wow. um, the gender. Um, and then if it is somebody's, um, if it's somebody's guide, they stand right behind me and then like, look over me, um, like at the person that I'm reading, I've, I've seen other people, um, I don't, I'm afraid to take a tour of my room, but I have a love seat, a couch and a recliner but I have had spirits, um, I mean, like seriously sit in, um, sit in the recliner, sit in the love seat. Um, we have this big, huge brick wall with the fire, um, with the fireplace. And I've had them sit next to the fireplace. I've had them stand at the door, um, stand in the doorway. They, um, some of them do smell, um, like, and it, it's, it always has to be a familiar scent to me or otherwise I don't know what it is. So I don't really ever smell cologne or perfume because I don't think I could identify that, but sometimes I'll smell smoke. Mm -hmm. Um, on one person, I remember I smelled whiskey, like all of a sudden I smelled whiskey and the person that had passed had been an alcoholic and that was their, um, mm. their choice of, um, of, of beverage. And, um, gosh, I've smelled, um, like wood, like freshly cut wood, um, just like different, like different things like that. Um, and when I, when I describe the way somebody looks, um, because I will get hair color, right. And eye color, right. You know, their, their stature, it's, it's very, that's where it's really difficult for me to describe because it's to me, for me, it's not an actual person right. that is right there. It's, it's a vision in my mind. And I always describe it, like when I get visions, I always describe it as dreaming with my eyes open. Mm. And so that's, so with their presence, that's what it feels like is that it's, it, it's coming to me like, like the images when you dream, you yeah. know, they're not, they're not always so vivid. So that's, that's how I describe it. Wow. I okay. hope that answered the question. Yeah, that was awesome. I have, okay. I have, and I'm, I'm asking, you know, I'm thinking for people that are tuning in, there's some that, um, this is, you know, they're, they see psychic intuitives, they're up with it. Maybe they've seen the Long Island medium. I don't know, have some understanding. And then I'm imagining there's some that are like, what are you talking about? This sounds a little like out there, woo woo. And then everyone in between, Mm -hmm. I'm wondering for those that are like, this is kind of new to me or how, like for those that might be wondering, like, how does this work? Like, how do you, how would you describe 
what's going on as best as you can, Sam. And then maybe we can look at the different kinds. Like I know there's Claire Audi and Claire Boyne. I don't know if you know or want to talk about that, but kind of like what's going on. I think for, for those that are, that are just, it, it, it's newer concept. Um, yeah. How do you describe Okay. That? All right. So I think it would be easier for me if it's okay with you to describe um, like how a session with me would go. Yes. Let's do if it. That, if that helps. Okay. Because I feel like that would be a little bit easier. Um, so I, I have, I have my own um, like ritual, like my own like little quirks that, you know, that I do before, before I meet with somebody, whether it's over the phone, a video chat or in person. And um, I call, I call mine, I call mine the gatekeeper. Oh, I and that. so I, so for my gatekeeper, um, his name is Steve, but what he is responsible for is because when I open, yeah. when I open, I am rushed with, mm. with, and cause it's, it's kind of like, like when I turn my, when I turn my light on, it's kind of like I'm a lighthouse yeah. Um, in this big giant storm. So I had wow. to learn that because when I first started doing readings, a lot of people would show up right? and the person I'm reading for says, I have no idea who this is. Like, I'm sorry, I just don't. But that's what was, ha it was just, I would be getting so much information. So when I learned that everybody has a gatekeeper, I had, I, I so what I do is I ask my gatekeeper and I ask my spiritual team um, to allow me to be a conduit. Um, I don't want to, I'm, I am not interested in giving people advice. Um, if it comes to that, that's fine, but I know that's not why they're seeing me. Yeah. And so I ask for only information for that specific person, or if it's a group of people, cause I've done that before. I ask for just those people Wow. and I ask the gatekeeper to allow them through and sometimes, not all the time, sometimes it's like I can see how many people walking through the gate. Yeah. And so like if I'm reading for somebody and it is, if they want to, if they want to speak to loved ones, I will say there's three people. And if it's, and I, and it's so far, like I've always been accurate with that, but so it's like I can see them walking through the gate. So that's how the mediumship, and if it's, if somebody is not interested, because not everybody is, in, not everybody has loved ones on the other side that they want to communicate with, right. then, um, then I don't necessarily need my gatekeeper. Then I ask myself, I ask my team, my spiritual team to help me tap into um, and open myself up to be a conduit for the other person's spiritual team. Yeah. So then I, I request that they, they use me as a messenger only. And so what happens is I open my heart and then I open my crown chakra and I open myself fully and completely and I get myself in a place where I just allow this energy to pour through me. Yeah. And then I picture my, my heart center opening up and then shooting out at that person. And that is how, um, what I like to say is like, I, Samantha, I step aside Yeah. and yeah. I just allow. So what I call it is I call it tapping into that person's consciousness. Mm, so if that. like, for instance, like I'm just going to use you for an example. So if I was reading for you, okay. whether you wanted mediumship or whether you didn't want, you know, you just wanted like a healing guidance session with me. Um, I am able to see your past. I'm able to see your present and I'm able to see what I call the potentialities of the future. And the reason why I call them potentialities is because the future is fluid. It yeah. changes all the time. Um, so if you turn right and you were supposed to turn left, now your future has changed its path. Yep. So that's why I, that's why I always tell people don't ever get attached to the future because it can change in the blink of an eye. Mm. So the other thing now where I am gifted, um, and I'm not, I, I know I am not the only one, but where, where I am strongest. And I guess what I would say is where, where the reason why my gifts are is I am able to see trauma. Mm -hmm. um, I'm able to feel the other person's trauma living and deceased. Um, and the, the healing energy that I'm acting as a conduit does does come out for the living person, but it also helps heal the deceased person on the other side. Wow. But I'm also able to see blockages. Wow. And so um, my, my biggest thing is I, 
I feel that people, when they are empowered yeah. um, and they are able to see where, where, where in their life they can control something, yeah. where their responsibility is, um, what it is that they can do for themselves, like in whatever particular situation that they are in, um, that's what I open to. And so it's, I'm able, that's why I call it healing guidance because I am, I am delivering the guidance from the ether and they are the ones that can see the bigger picture. And I am just, I am privy to, to that knowledge, to that awareness. And then it's through my words, wow. through my body, through this vehicle that that information can be passed through. And I'm also able to see where people are psychically gifted um, and what they can do also to amplify that if that is something that they choose. And does that, did that explain? That is awesome. Yeah, I think. And then okay. we're going to have, we'll have show notes too, to kind of go through the steps of what you're talking about. Okay. How you do it. I'm thinking, I mean, I'm like, this is so cool. And, and you know what, for the listeners, what's, if I can just share really quickly, cause we kind of have a cool story, I think just how this <laughs> even, so I heard Samantha, I heard you on Katie Crenshaw's, um, if I'm being honest podcast, which is awesome. And I heard it and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to connect with this person. Like I just resonate with your story, what you're talking about, you know, we'll get into being a mom, being an entrepreneur, being like all of the, all of the things here. And I sent a note, it got deleted somehow on your website. And I was like, no, no, we're supposed to connect. I sent you a note. And then, so you guys listening, Sam wrote back, we set a time to talk and it was like an instant friendship. I felt like just quick, we connected. And what was amazing to me was the ability to, for you to just, to tune into who I was. I was sort of sending it the, with the hopes of like, okay, we've got to connect. You've got to be on my podcast. We're going to be friends. But what was so cool is you were able to receive that and sense that I'm guessing because you responded. Yes. I know you get a lot of messages and notes. And so right away I was like, okay, this woman is, is super duper intuitive and definitely like she, I mean, I could just feel that you received that message so clearly. And what I love is that you're helping people. You talked about empowering and where we can take responsibility. I just love how you're using the ability to connect with those that have that have perhaps passed on or guides to help someone with both blockages with healing and then these are ways that you can move forward to me that's like you're elevating each person so when they're after they meet with you or work with you they're in a whole new energetic spot like they have ways yes. to change this is like i mean our planet needs this and i love yeah. that it's all about this i mean i have chills thinking saying this right now, you know, you're adding such healing to the planet by doing this. You really are. What a gift, lady. Like, what a gift. Thank you. My gosh. What? Well, it's also yeah. Yeah, the reason why I think it's called a gift. And the one thing that has brought, brought a lot to my life is when I'm able to see somebody's soul, like when they, when they are, when they open themselves up to me, because I always ask everybody that I'm reading for to please be open and I can feel when they're not. Yeah. And especially the ones that are kind of closed off a little bit. And then I ask them to open and then they do, they open and they let me in. It is like the most beautiful thing in the whole entire world. Mm. And this is, this is, and this has also changed a belief system of mine. Mm, say more. Because yeah. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because um, I truly do believe, and I will stand by this, that every soul is beautiful. And I do, th I, and I, that this is not to say that darkness doesn't exist and people do not commit bad deeds. Right. Because I know that, but that is the human part of them. Yeah. Every single person, and it always makes me so sad sometimes when I'm sitting across from somebody and they do not, they do not see this, mm. this, this, this majestic beauty that mm. is their soul, that is their essence, that is who they are. And some people, when, I, when I'm articulating to them yeah. you know, about themselves and I'm trying, because that's the other thing that I 
you know, and that's something I too struggle with and something that I also have to work on. But when I'm able to really, you know, touch and feel somebody's essence and they allow me in, I mean, that's, that's a very vulnerable because they're letting me into their spirit. Yeah. That is, um, that is a true gift because I'm surrounded by so much beauty, but also too, when the loved ones come through, even if there was conflict while there was living, there is so much love on the other side. Mm. And so when I am surrounded by the deceased loved ones and they come through, there is, I, I mean, I am surrounded by the energy of love. And to me, that's a gift that I feel to be also very healing for me and something shifts and changes in me yep. with each reading that I do because I feel uplifted because I was able to tap into such, such love. Mm -hmm. And then also when I'm able to channel um, messages for somebody mm -hmm. like through their guides or through their, you know, through their angels, um, or sometimes it's my guides that, that are, that are giving me that information. It's, it's like, I can, I can sense, I can feel these like little tiny seeds being planted in the person's mind. Oh, wow. And, you know, then I work really hard to, you know, cover them, you know, like cover and water. And then I just, I ask that person, like, please keep the sun, please keep the sun on these seeds, you know, like just keep wow. that in your mind. Don't let that go. But it's, um, and then the other thing too is I know the more I start doing this, you know, and I actually, I shouldn't say I know. Um, I know there's a possibility that the more, you know, the more I keep doing, I may forget some people, but right now, um, I truly do. I feel connected to every single person that I have read for. And to me, that's a gift because it feels like there's this, um, I don't know, like a, like a web, um, mm. or some type of net, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that's out there. And, um, sometimes I'll have um, random memories of somebody that I read for. And I always take that as they need, they need a little shot, like a little dosage of light and love. Mm. And so because of that connection, because they open themselves to me and because they come in, I, even from a distance, I open, and I have no idea if this were, you know, cause I, I don't even know if they know that. I mean, I don't think that anyone knows that I'm doing this, but I will, I will open myself back up and I will shoot that love right back to them because we made that connection. Wow. And so that to me is also a gift because, um, majority of my clients are over the phone or through video. So a lot of these people I haven't even met in person and wow. to be able to have a connection like that with somebody that I've never met in the physical, yeah. but we connect in, in the ether is, is that to me is, um, a magical experience, which, um, it, it is, it's, it's, I, that's why I say that my gift is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Um, cause it doesn't just give to other people. It gives to me as well. So, so beautiful. This, you know, I think what you're talking about and what you're doing is is it's just such a healer level. And it's healing, it sounds like for you and for everyone mm -hmm. you touch. I mean, I can't think of a more cool <laughs> gift. And I know you you and I've talked, I mean, I I um I believe we all have access to the divine, to higher consciousness. I'm curious what you what you feel about everyone's ability. I know like, so this sounds like a very, um, like a, like an actual, like life purpose. This is one, this is a big gift. What do you, what would you say to people? What's your belief, I guess, first about intuition and cultivating it and accessing higher realms of consciousness for anyone? And do you feel like that's accessible to everyone? And if so, how, how do we do that? Okay. Absolutely. 100% every single human being on this planet has intuition, has the ability. It's like the way that I always describe it too is, I mean, when you say like, well, I have a gut feeling or I just knew I should have, you know, like I should have gone here or yeah. something just told me that I should be here right now. That is intuition. Yeah. And so my belief is, um, Okay, so this is this is going to be again multifaceted. But, I love um, it. Okay, so so my gift is very strong, right? Mm -hmm. Very very strong. It does not mean that, um, and I and I am not the only person. And there are there are others out there that have stronger gifts than I do. Um, 
so I am definitely, even though I am strong, I am definitely far from the strongest um, psychics and mediums and healers that are out there. But what I, what I have come to understand, and this seems to be like the universal language among psychics um, and intuitives is my soul made the agreement in this lifetime that this is what I was going to do. So yeah. it's not just so much that um, like every lifetime I have these gifts. It's just this particular one. I am here to wake up as many people as I possibly can, heal as many people on both sides as I possibly mm -hmm. can, because I do have to say this, and this is really important. Um, mm -hmm. Our loved ones on the other side, they too need healing. Mm -hmm. So just because they crossed over, they, they, they may not be in pain anymore, mm -hmm. but there's there that, that soul still needs healing, which is why um, mediums, people like me are used. Mm. Um, because when somebody comes to see me and I'm connecting with their deceased loved one, their deceased loved one is still connected to that person. So if there's, if there's unforgiveness, if there's hatred, if there's anything that's negative or low vibrating with amongst the people that are living, um, that's all that's connected. Um, to those on the other side and um, our deceased loved ones, they have jobs too. Um, they become spirit guides for other people as well. So the more they heal on the other side, the more other people they're able to help. So, um, wow. so what I'm getting at with all of this is I, I did not mean to make it go there, but um, I, wanted, I did want to touch on that because I think that that is pretty cool. But so it's neat. almost like it's almost like my soul said, okay, you're going to be a psychic medium. This is what you're going to be able to do for this lifetime. Um, I have met some very, very strong, intuitive people that I have read for, and they, they do not want to be like me at all. They do not want to do readings. They don't even want to tell people that they have this gift. And I always tell them there's nothing wrong with that. Um, this is my calling. Um, this was something I could not ignore. And... Um, because it just kept getting louder. And I told them, I said, so if you are not receiving the call, there's nothing wrong. But for me, the way that I see it is, let's just, I'm just going to use you for an example, but like you, like, you know, like with your intuition yeah. and you used it for yourself. Yeah. Well, that's going to raise your vibration, yeah. right? Because now things are, your life is going to get easier. You are going to attract certain things. You're going to know more. Um, potentially just bring more abundance, more blessings into your life because you are using your intuition. Well, the more your vibration elevates, it, it raises the vibration of everybody that comes into contact with you, every person that you talk to, at, like your entire family. And so I always say energy is contagious, whether it's mm -hmm. good energy or bad energy, it's completely yes. and fully contagious. So those of us, when we start to vibrate higher, yeah. it it shoots out into, I mean, to everything that surrounds us, our plants, our, our pets, um, even our lawn, our home will mm. then, you know, start having more of a vibration. Your car, when you enter a store, just your smile might be full of so much healing energy that it made the cashier just feel a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's why I always say that like intuition does not mean that you have to become a psychic mm. or that just because you don't, you like you do not get visions like I do does not mean that you do not have these gifts. Yeah. I just say, this is my contract for this lifetime. This is what, this is what I chose to do, which is why I'm able to have this. Yeah. But um, think about like a police officer, for instance, um, that, you know, they have hunches all the time, right? Yes. Yeah. For sure. So that's, that's intuition. And right. when they follow that, most of the time they either save a life or are able to find the bad guy. And so does that, does that police officer that's following the hunch that has the hunch, do they need to hear perfectly clear, you know, from the angels or from deceased loved ones in order to be able to use the intuitive ability that they were given? No, it's just, it's, it's like, Every, it's, it's kind of like artists, you know, you can appreciate Van Gogh and Picasso, but they yes. are completely different, but you can appreciate both, but both added, yeah. added a certain, certain energy to the world and each one added a certain beauty to the, to the world. And that is for me what I feel because um, 
I've seen, excuse me, myself, I've seen a few mediums. Each reading was completely different from one to one. Like mm. it was, you know, and the way that I describe it was one was going to a rock concert. The other was going to the, you know, symphony. Like, so it's just different energy, different, um, right. you know, like one of them was just pow, 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 pow with the information. The other was just so calm. And she's just like, you know, she was just, oh, honey, let's, let's talk about this, you know? And the other one is, was just, you know, like drilled information at me, but that's, but that's what I mean. And both of them were able to tap into different types of consciousness of me and they were able to see different things. So what I always say, whenever I tell people, and this is the hardest thing. And one day when I do become a teacher, um, cause that is, that is one of my goals. Um, the hardest thing and the, is to trust. Yes. Oh Yes. And because the first thing that we want to do and, mm-hmm. and, you know, and then sometimes I'm even guilty at it. I just, I have been trusting long enough that now like, you know, yes. trusting my gifts and trusting my information is now just a habit of mine, yes. but it took me a long time to get there. It really did. To trust so, your intuition. You're saying yes, to, to trust, trust my yeah. intuition. And yeah. so everyone needs to trust their intuition. So what I always say is start, start really small. So the, if you want to tap in, like, mm-hmm. let's just like, this is something that every single listener can do right now. Okay. If you want to start tapping into your intuition, you start doing small things. And right. what I mean by that is you ask, Okay. But you ask for small things. And the reason why I say make them small is because, um, it's, it's kind it's kind of quicker. It, it's delivered a little bit quicker. So it's able, so I always call it the parking lot game. Oh, um, yes, I know this. So yes. it's just, you just, you say like before, like you can do it in your car, you can do it while you're driving and you can do it when you, even when you turn into the parking lot. So like with me, with my two kids, I need a spot by the cart corral. Like that is just, that is my spot. And so I always ask, I always ask, can I please have a spot by the cart corral? And um, I remember when I told one of my friends this and he just said, Sam, the reason why there's always a spot there is because nobody wants to park there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you might be right. You might be right. So guess what I did? I stopped asking. Mm. And I swear on my children's lives, I swear. When I stopped asking, there was never a spot by the cart corral. I, I, I mean, I kid you not. So then I started asking again. I got a spot by the cart corral. So it's the little things like that where I was like, yeah. okay, maybe, maybe I can. Um, or um, gosh, like, Honestly, safe people, yeah, um, friends, somebody that you can talk to that you're not going to feel judged. So, mm. like, um, what I would say is, okay, so like my husband, no offense to him, he was he was a really difficult person because um, he, oh my gosh, he would have a logical explanation. I'm not even kidding for everything that I said, right? And he would, and and he would come up with five of them sometimes, and right. so he was not an easy one for me to talk to. But I did have a girlfriend of mine, and her psychic gift started becoming strong at the same time, and um, so she was somebody, and so she was somebody that I would practice with. So she was somebody that I would, um, I would play along with, and I would be like, okay, so this is what happened and I'm going to go ahead and trust it and kind of see what happens. And then also journal. Oh, I love it. I would definitely say journal. And the reason for that is because if you write down your feelings, your experiences, the little tiny things that happen, um, I mean, it could even be like a squirrel coming to your window. Um, I mean, it could just be like you, you found a feather in the parking lot. I mean, any signs, anything that you're asking for, but you're able to go back. Hmm. You're able to go back. And then for me, where the journaling became really helpful was when I started noticing how right I was. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and because at the time when a lot of this stuff happened, none of it made sense. But when I was able to look back, I was like, that really did happen. Yep. That did. So the more I was able to see that, my confidence grew. And then it just became easier to trust. And then, um, like, and I, like I said earlier in the beginning, it was just like when my angel was asking me to stop cleaning with bleach, you know, and start, right. you know, cleaning with more of like a natural, it was just kind of like, this is so weird. Like who, like who has these thoughts, you know, right. like who, who thinks like this, but it was just, I said, okay, I'll listen, I'll start doing this. And then it just, you know, like I said, and just everything builds on top of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. This is like. This is so awesome. And I'm just thinking, you know, 
you, you mentioned actually a little bit earlier about energy being contagious. Mm-hmm. And I love one of the things that you're saying is, you know, I mean, you can, goodness, there's so much out these days. I was just reading a book by Dr. Joe Dispenza about the breaking the habit of being yourself. And he talks about, you know, quantum physics, like it's, I mean, he breaks it down, but what you're saying, and it's true, we are made of energy. We know that by yes. energy. And knowing you and what I've been working on and seeing, it's like when you start to get in tune with that, well, I, you can tell you go into a room and someone's negative. I mean, you feel yes. it, you feel it. Um, I know for me, it explained why I was very sensitive as a child around people's homes and certain stores. I could feel energy very, very acutely. Um, but I love what you said about this, you know, that we're contagious. And so ways, you know, I could imagine noticing your energy, how you feel, but then also, like you said, you know, ask for small things and watch what happens. I would imagine even journaling about that, like for a parking spot, like get a journal. That's all about this, about your intuition. You could call it your intuitive journal or evidence or whatever, or, you know, and, and, and then sharing it with safe friends. I love what you said. This, I, I know for me personally, we've talked about this. This is like been a game changer in my own life. And I, you know, and I'm not, I wouldn't put myself in the same category, but it's certainly heightened my intuition. I love what you said about we all have this access. We all do. Yes. We all do. We're created with that. Um, yeah. Do you, one thing I, I, I know for me, one of the ways that information comes often are signs and symbols. And I guess the thing is that we're all different. So we're going to hear it and see it and feel it. It's going to be unique to each person is my thought. Yes. Um, And again, it goes, so like, okay, empaths, like at this, like empaths. um, Yeah. Talk about empaths. I feel feel like, (laughs) I feel like empaths are coming out everywhere. Yes. Um, And so what that is, is it's, it's funny because it's everybody senses energy differently. Yeah. And so the reason, okay, this is how I explain it. Um, I, for me. Um, okay, so like when, when I'm delivering, when I'm delivering information, uh, they, the guides, the angels, they are using my experiences, yeah. um, the way that I see the world, my perception, um, my language, yeah. my, my memories, everything that is very unique to me, right? Because that's how I communicate. Um, so it's, and this, it's kind of like, that's what's stored. So you could have somebody that has a completely different life than I do, um, sees the world completely different. So they're going to feel things right. differently. Um, there's, there's people that can, that can read auras and they can just like look at a person and know exactly, like know exactly what they look like. So it, it but, but that's also energies because what that person is reading is your energetic field where yeah. another person can just sense, you know, like, I'm sure you've heard this, like you feel blue, you yeah. know, um, like that kind of thing. Like you just, you feel kind of blue or you feel really light or what's going on. You feel kind of heavy. So, so empaths are, are people that feel and they can feel everything. And going back to when you were saying, when you walk into, you know, um, when you walk into a room, they can feel it. Um, then you have um, another one, and this is one of the most popular ones, is just this knowing, yeah. right? Like people just, they just know something. And a lot of people can't describe it, but it's, it's, it's all energy coming in. It's just, it's again, it's how we interpret it. Yeah. And how, how we're able to communicate, how to communicate that energy out. Yeah. So cool. This is so, <laughs> I could like, so you guys, I know we, we've been going on and I just, I could keep going. I want to, I want to talk about, um, just touch upon what it's like to have this gift and to have two young children, to be a mom, to be an entrepreneur. And then I know, you know, your, your Facebook lives are amazing. You work with clients one-on-one, you're going to be doing courses. You're going to be doing all kinds of teaching. Like you're just, I mean, it's amazing. Cause I've kind of watched like the expansion. How are you, how does that work girl? And, and do you find like the gifts kind of stop when you're with your kids and how do you like balance it and balance the gift? Like, how does that all work? a lot 
Okay, well, my first thing, and I always tell people this too, especially when they want to explore, like if, like anybody that does want to explore or be like me, um, the first thing that I did was I, I, I set boundaries. I set yeah. boundaries with the other side. And one of them was um, I, I wanted um, my kids are number one. Like hands down, my kids are number one. I want to be with them. Um, and I don't want to miss their childhood because they're one and a half and three and a half right now. Yeah. So I didn't want to miss, I didn't want to miss their childhood. I, I truly, and, and I, this is the type of person that I, I have not always been like this, like this, but I am now, but I do believe that there's a lesson in everything. Yeah. I mean, absolutely everything. And I have noticed that the more I'm able to step back and kind of see or ask like, okay, what am I meant to learn mm-hmm. um, from this? I have found more peace. And so starting this business, um, it, 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 it's very challenging because um, childcare is, 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 is very difficult. Um, but that is changing. But, um, Yay. <laughs> but it's just, you know, if my kids are sick, you know, like they, they are going to come first, you know? And so there's, um, there's a lot, but from this, there's, there's the less than self-care. Um, yeah. In order for me to be, in order for me to have my energetic field in order to help people in order to live out my purpose in order to do this, I have to be right with myself. Yeah. And so doing all of this and honestly, prior to all of this as a mother, I was not, I I thought I was, I thought I was doing a good job taking care of myself and it wasn't until I realized um, mm. the less I took care of myself, the less I was able to tap in. Um, wow. So like I would receive, like I could just, because to me, I can feel when I'm connected and I can feel when I'm not connected. And I always say when I'm not connected, there's like, I either need to do some grounding, yeah. like grounding exercises and get myself grounded, or I need to start looking at myself, like where, where in my life am I lacking for Sam? What does Sam need? Not the mom, Sam, not the wife, Sam, not the business, Sam. What does the, re- like, what does Sam need? Does she need to read? Yeah. Does she need to watch a TV show? Like, like, what is it that she needs? And so I noticed that when I spend some more time with just me, who yeah. I am, not as a mother, not as a wife, not as a psychic medium, but just, just closed off to the world. So that's something that, that, that has really taught me. And, um, and it's balance because to be completely honest with you, um, I, even though I truly believe that I was capable of doing it all, I I, I am not. Um, and so I noticed that when my business got more attention, my kids started, you know, begging for the attention through bad behaviors or, you know, um, increased crying, increased, you know, clinginess. Um, and so that's, so I guess like I have, what my business has taught me is how to see the cues, Mm. um, of Mm -hmm. where it is. Um, and it's my business, not so much like it's, it's harder to read the cues with my business, um, to be honest with you, because it's, uh, it's still growing, which is fantastic. But, um, it's just, it's when my family life starts to, when my family, when my family starts giving me the cues, then it's time that that I know I'm off balance. Or um, if my anxiety level starts to get high, then I know I'm off balance. And it's, to be honest with you, it's so easy to want to pour my entire everything into my business because it's like, I literally, like, it's the magical world, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. I get to, you know, I get to just be in all these different places, but the truth is, um, I'm meant to be a human being. That's why I'm here. I'm meant yeah. to be human yeah. and spending too much time in the magical realms versus in the human realms that throws off the balance as well. Yeah. And so that's also something that I have learned. And again, like I said, it's just, um, like I say this, and I think I've written this on my Facebook page a couple of times, but chaos is a teacher. Chaos yeah. is, 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 is a fantastic teacher because yeah. chaos presents itself when you need order in your life. And it's just, it's, it's a matter of asking the right questions. And, and so what I have learned to do instead of 
and sometimes I won't lie. Like sometimes I, I have no clarity. Like it's, it's difficult for me to problem solve because, um, I just, I'm, I'm in it. Like I'm, I'm in the energy of chaos, but when I'm able to take a step back and say, okay, what is it? Do I need, like, what do I need to do? What do I need to take a step back from? Um, that's, that's what I have learned. And then it's, wow. I, I guess what I'm saying is I always learn from chaos. I learn what needed be to be placed in order, like what, yes. what, what was lacking. And then once I get that order, once I, once I fix that, then it's like I'm propelled into the next step. Yeah. So there's a lot of, yes. Yeah, so there's a lot of letting go and just, just, and so that's, that's been a hard lesson to learn to let go. You are amazing. You're amazing in what you're sharing. And I want to say one of the takeaways I just got actually. So for everyone tuning in, whether you're also a psychic medium or not at all, wherever you are in the spectrum of what your purpose, what you're here to do, what I just got that you said, this is really interesting. I will tell you, I've noticed this for myself, Sam. You said really that, that, that time on self-care, like if you're lacking it is harder to access your gifts. And I think that's universal. So mm -hmm. whatever, absolutely. whatever your gifts and strengths are, your talents, you know, and this is the thing, and I'm thinking for, I know we've talked about this a lot, like our culture and society is super duper fast paced. It is on the go. You know, it's easy to get on autopilot. It's easy to get out of your lane. It's easy to compare yourself. It's easy to feel like you're coming up short. It's easy to feel like you're overwhelmed. I mean, I, I manage that in myself. And I think, the thing is, is being able to manage all of that and remembering you come first, that taking care of yourself, self-care gives you access. And for you in a really, in a real way, it allows you to access the other side, the veil, you know, beyond the veil, the divine to, to be able to help people with healing. And I'm thinking for every, for all of us, like for me too, in, in, in being able to, to make an impact in whatever I'm doing, but anybody, this really is important. And I think, you know, someday, I don't know if we can do this yet, but I, I wish we could like measure our energy and see it because it would be cool to see like when you're in high vibration, you know, you're measuring it, this hurts, megahertz or whatever it is. But I think for now we can always use our feelings as a guidance system. Yes. How we're feeling. Um, you, I just, I mean, we're going to need a round two is all I got to say. <laughs> Y'all, when we talk, this is like, you don't understand. I'm always like, okay, I need like five hours with this girl. You are, you are such a gift. I, I think what you're doing and how you're adding healing is such a gift on this planet. Okay. So for those who would like to work with you, book an appointment with you, learn more, join your Facebook group, whatever, all the things, where, like, where can we all find you? Okay. So my Facebook page is The Soul Therapist, and um, you should see a picture of me, um, blonde hair. And then my website is thesoultherapist.com. And on there, there's I, I have a frequently asked questions section where I feel I have answered every question out there. And if there's another one, you are <laughs> more than welcome to email me. And I would appreciate the help. Um, and I also have testimonials from other clients. And you are also able to book an appointment straight from my website. Awesome. Well, I highly recommend if anyone is intrigued or just to, you are one of the most personable, loving, warm, intuitive, caring, authentic, real people, women I know. And Thank seriously, you. getting to know you and I know, I'll save this for another time, but I, I, I know I feel Sam and I have done past live experiences together, mm -hmm. as I know you have. And I could just say in this lifetime where I, I've gotten to know you, you're just, you're a gem and um Anyone that's interested, I really recommend you reach out to, to you, Sam, because you are not just the real deal, but you've got such heart. And uh, I'm just so honored to have had you here. This was such a fun conversation. Thank you. I was honored to have this. Thank you.